Howdy y'all, I hope you guys are all doing well, I hope you guys are safe, and I hope you guys are healthy. My name is Josh, and if you don't know who I am, I like talking about clothes and personal style. If that's your thing, feel free to stick around for the video, but today's video is actually going to be about one of my favorite topics to talk about just of all time, and that's going to be selvage denim. I'm going to be going ahead and telling you guys where it comes from, how it came about, what it's for, really everything I know about selvage denim just condensed into one video where I can hopefully teach you guys a thing or two about selvage denim, and compared to regular denim and stretch denim and the like. So. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Cool, so right off the bat, what I wanna do is actually define exactly what selvage denim is. So selvage denim is kind of just a word that was made because when denim used to be created and woven on looms, they, the older looms that they would use in factories would be a selvage loom and those selvage looms created a fabric that was significantly smaller than the fabric that we are able to create today though how wide the strips of fabric come out where it was much smaller than how it comes out today because today we are able to use industrial size looms that are just gigantic and make as much material as possible whereas back in the day they made things that were significantly narrower and and the edges of those fabrics, they would create an edge of the fabric that actually by itself would hold itself together. Whereas in today's industrial um, industrial world with the machines so, like, I guess efficient? Uh, yeah, I guess efficient. Uh, the edges of that fabric are frayed. If I can find a picture, I'll definitely put it up for you guys. But just generally speaking, selvage comes from the word self-edge. And that self-edge is produced by those looms that were used to create that denim back in the day. Those looms, a lot of people are very big on heritage, especially denim heads. They do very much value the heritage behind denim itself. And so that's why they choose selvage over um, over non selvage denim. And there are many other reasons that I'll get into later on in the video, but generally speaking, that's kind of how selvage works. Now more often than not, selvage denim comes in 100% cotton, which is my preferred denim. Um, they come in various weights, which kind of translate over to how heavy they are. Obviously weight translates into how heavy it is, but how heavy it is really how heavy you want your denim depends on where you live, your climate. If it is very cold, you're gonna want a heavier weight denim to kind of keep you a little bit more warm. If you're in like sunny and hot environments, you're going to want very re relatively lightweight denim. So the way that really 100% cotton jeans work is that I think that 100% cotton jeans are significantly better for fits that are that have their own shape to them, as opposed to skinny jeans, which is stretch denim. There's nothing wrong with stretch denim, it just tends to not last as long and not are just generally not as thick. So stretch denim can definitely wear down quicker over time, and with stretch denim and skinny jeans, it forms to your body quite well. Nothing wrong with skinny jeans. If you like skinny jeans, wear skinny jeans. I don't really care, to be honest with you. But with 100% cotton jeans, and there is stretch selvage, but that is kind of rare to find. But with 100% cotton jeans, they tend to hold their shape significantly better than stretch jeans. Stretch has like spandex, elastine, polyester, other things that are mixed into it that give it the property of being able to mold to your body and that's why they're good for um, skinny jeans. But if you have 100% cotton, I very much advise against getting 100% cotton skinny jeans because that is not very forgiving. It's quite uncomfortable. I've had skinny selvage before and it, it honestly kind of is just unbelievably uncomfortable. But things with straight legs, flares, um, other like wide leg trousers. If the trouser or jeans itself has a shape to it, a definitive shape to it, like straight, slim straight, wide, then 100% cotton is the way to go because after washing and after being worn, it tends to retain their shape significantly better than anything that's stretchy because stretchy things tend to shrink. Now, not all 100% cotton pairs of jeans are going to be selvage. Selvage is not in reference to the material, selvage is in reference to the process yet again. But 
100% cotton jeans and selvage do differ. And one way to really define, not maybe not define, but to see that something is selvage is by looking at the outseam of a pair of jeans when you get them. So if I could just kind of focus on this right here, this one right here is selvage because you can kind of see that this edge of this material is completely like solid, whereas the edge of this material has to have stitches that are put in so that it won't unravel. I know there are better examples out there, unfortunately. I don't really have better examples, but what those things are called, what the, this little this little edge thing is called is a flat busted seam, and that is definitely one of the definitive ways that you can find selvage denim. But the reason why selvage denim can sometimes be superior to 100% cotton denim is that selvage has more characteristics to it. Since they are made on older looms that are I mean, not in use anymore, unless it is specifically for selvage. Those looms are kind of imperfect. They have a little bit of imperfectness to them, which can add to the characteristics of the jeans themselves. So things like, I'm sure a lot of you have heard some terms like slubby denim, neppy denim, or anything like that. Those are just tiny imperfections that actually add to the characteristics of the jeans themselves. Whereas regular jeans that are made in the modern era are made on industrial looms that are pretty perfect and basically don't really mess up. And so it is a little bit too uniform for some people, for some people's liking. I mean, it really is just kind of nitpicking, especially when you're talking about the specifics of jeans, but that isn't really the only reason why selvage denim or older selvage denim is better. There are plenty more. What a lot of denim heads really love to get when they are looking for their selvage is they absolutely love to get raw selvage denim. Now what raw selvage denim is, is denim that is made into a pair of pants but is not washed, is not treated with chemicals, is not distressed at all. It is just that uniform indigo or black, I have a pair of black selvage, and Basically, you put your wear into them and with whatever you have in your pockets, with whatever you do, if you're working a lot and you put, you're put you on your knees, you will get distressing around the knees. If you uh, bend your legs a lot, which like, I mean, who doesn't? You'll get honeycombing behind the legs. But the thing is, is that those distressing marks, that distressing over time is made by you. It does definitely wear into your body and that's what a lot of selvage denim lovers just really buy them for it is very very personalized by just wearing them and as opposed to a pair of pre-distressed jeans like you get a pair of jeans from the store a lot of times if like say you have like a knee blowout that knee blowout for me at least I'm not that tall um, that knee blowout sometimes just won't even be on your knee and it'll just look really weird and wrong. Whereas if you wore a pair of selvage denim for years on end and develop that naturally where your knee hits, that distressing will develop. And so it is perfect for you because that's how your body works. But there's really nothing wrong with pre-distressed or non-selvage jeans. It's really just a heritage thing. Since jeans and denim itself originated in workwear, some people choose to work in denim. Of course, nowadays workwear has advanced and we have materials like ripstop, duck canvas, and other things that people use for actual work and that's a little bit more efficient because of that. But for looks sake, a lot of denim heads like raw selvage denim to really add their own character to it. And just as a disclaimer, and this is definitely something that I don't really hear a lot of people talking about, but selvage denim is extremely uncomfortable. It definitely, definitely, definitely needs some breaking in. And a lot of people, that can be a deal breaker. If it's not comfortable, why wear it? And that's a lot of people's mentality. Whereas for me, it did take quite a while for me to get used to selvage denim, but I was just so much in love with the history behind it that I wanted to give my selvage pairs a chance. So. I will say that they are extremely uncomfortable. However, however, once broken in and once actually worn into your body, maybe gone through a wash, maybe just really, really lived in, they actually become one of the most comfortable pairs of jeans because 
the denim actually stretches out exactly to how your body regularly moves. Now, one other big topic that a lot of people kind of debate on is washing your selvage denim. A lot of people say just flat out don't wash it. A lot of people say put it in a freezer. A lot of people will say a lot of different things. But from my experience and from my, I guess, research, you can call it, uh, wash your jeans. If it smelled, if, it, if you got something on them, wash your jeans. The two ways that I have tried and have worked really well for me is that when I want to wash my selvage denim and it is raw, all I need to do is turn it inside out, throw it in a laundry bag, put it into the laundry machine. Is that right? The, wa the washing machine. And the laundry bag prevents uh, abrasion, too much abrasion, taking too much indigo out, but put a little bit of detergent in there just so you can get it actually clean. So just to recap, because I don't remember where I left off, jeans, inside out, throw into a laundry bag, put it in the washing machine, put it on cold and let it wash. Go ahead and let it wash. I do suggest putting it in there by themselves because the indigo can get on other pieces of clothing if it is real raw indigo. But then once it is done washing, take it out and hang dry it in, not in the sun. But yeah, that's how I wash my jeans. It's like kind of really easy. You can also go ahead and fill up a bathtub, uh, submerge your jeans in there, put a little bit of detergent that's that's mixed into the water and just go ahead and let it soak for an hour or so and then let it hang dry. That's also like a, a solid way for you to wash your jeans, but uh, don't put them in the freezer. Uh, from what I from what I know and what I've researched, the most freezers are not cold enough to actually kill the bacteria that's in it. So putting them in the freezer isn't a great way of cleaning your pants. Yeah, so some companies, a lot of companies highly suggest wearing your pair of pants for your pair of raw denim for like six months before the first wash. That's really just subjective. If you want to wash them, just wash them. It doesn't really matter. But I will say that the longer you go without washing your jeans, the better the characteristics will develop in your jeans. The distressing will be a lot more pronounced if you hold off on washing them for a long time. Now some of the fade patterns that can develop when you are wearing raw selvage is like things around your phone. If you have your phone in your pocket, I keep mine in my front right pocket. Some of my jeans kind of have an outline for where my phone is. It just kind of makes that outline because of my phone pressing against the leg and then that coming into contact with other things will kind of just make an outline of your phone. Or my wallet in my back right pocket, that from sitting down, sitting up, doing whatever I need to do, there is all, like a lot of times going to be just like a wear mark on my back right pocket that is in the shape of my wallet. Um, yeah, so your jeans basically take on the characteristics that you decide to put them through and that's kind of the big appeal when it comes to a lot of selvage. And I think the uh, last thing I wanna talk about is sanferized versus unsanferized. And that, uh, a lot of people kind of hear those words and have no idea what those mean, but it's very, very simple. Sanferized versus unsanferized is a way for you to basically kind of dictate what size you get when you buy pants. If it is sanferized, it has been stretched, it has been treated, it has been basically, in a way, pre-shrunk so that you can buy closer to your actual size. Whereas unsanferized denim, if you get unsanferized denim, that will shrink in the wash. It, you basically buy a size up so that it can shrink down to your size. It's a shrink to fit. But uh, yeah, I think that's really all I have to say. I know this is a really long one. I'm super sorry that this really dragged, but I hope you guys learned a thing or two. But um, yeah. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let's have a conversation. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do what you do, and thank you, thank you. If you made it this far, thank you for sticking around. But uh, yeah, that's all I have to say, and I will see you guys in the next video.